our next thing up is absolute value, which a lot of times uh, will give you multiple answers for any given set of equations. Um, so if they do that, then they'll always have to give you some sort of way of weeding them out. Uh, so to explain that, let me go ahead and give you an equation. So let's say we have an equation like this one. So the absolute value of x, sorry, 8 minus 4y is equal to 16. All right, whenever you have an absolute value problem, you have to split it up. So in this case, if they gave you this problem, they would have to say, um, let's say, y is positive, what is the value of y? Because there is no x in this problem. So you'd have to split it up into two separate equations. The first one is 8 minus 4y is equal to 16. And then the second one is 8 minus 4y is equal to negative 16. So if you solve both of these, you'll figure out what the answer is. So in the first one, just a normal equation, you take away 8 from both sides. So you've got negative 4y is equal to 8. And then you would divide by negative 4. So then you'd have y is equal to negative 2. Okay, so y is 2, negative 2, we don't want that. So let's see if we can get the other equation to give us a positive value for y. So same way you start out, you take away negative 8 from both sides. And you're going to get negative 4y is equal to negative 24. And then you divide by negative 4y on both sides, or sorry, negative 4 on both sides. And then you've got y is equal to positive 6. So in this case, your answer would be 6. So anytime that they give you an absolute value like this one, they're going to have to specify that your variable is positive, negative, or something else, odd even, for instance, so that you know which one of your answers you can pick. Because if this was just a normal math test, negative 2 and 6 would both be equally correct. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and let's end this Algebra Part 1 video by doing a bonus question. So the bonus question is going to be a normal equation that you could see, except there's a twist. It's not going to ask for just x or just y. It's going to ask for a combination of the two. Now, the reason that we care about this is that it's a great way to demonstrate how being sneaky can definitely help you. Okay, so here are two equations, x times y divided by 3 equals 7, and x squared times y squared plus x times y divided, all divided by 5xy is equal to, we don't know yet, so we're going to have to figure that out. Alright, so if we're looking at this equation, um, on the left hand side, we can't actually solve for x or for y. The reason for that is that in order to solve for any variable, you need to have the same or more number of equations as you have variables. So since we only have the left-hand side equation as a full equation, aka it's, it's equal to some number, um, we only have one equation, we have two variables. So it is physically impossible to solve for x and y individually. You're going to end up seeing that quite often on the test, and it's okay if you see that. The trick is stay calm and try to figure out what they're asking you for. So, for instance, whenever you see an equation that has two variables and it's only one equation to figure it out, that's okay. You're always going to have to figure out what is x plus y, x divided by y, x minus y, or in this case, x times y. So if we're looking just at the left, um, we can say that x times y is equal to 3 times 7, or 21. Now we can't say what x or y is individually, so I realize that's going to be the normal kind of first step after you do this, um, because x could be 21 and y could be 1, or x could be 1 and y could be 21, or x is 3, y is 7. You get my idea, you'd have to check many different combinations of things to actually figure this out. So that's going to take you a long time. Not fun, not worth it. So let's work with what we have. So we got x times y equals 21. All right, so looking at our second equation, we have a couple obvious instances in which we have an x times y. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in just those parts, and then I'll show you what you can do with the rest of it. So x squared times y squared plus, we have an x times y, so 21. 
and we divide by 5 times 21. Okay, great. So now we have an x squared and we have a y squared. Again, we can't find x individually, so we can't plug in what we think x is and then square that, and we can't do the same exact thing with y. But x squared is just x times x, and y squared is just y times y, so you actually can rewrite them x times y times x times y. So once you rewrite it like that, it's pretty easy to see that you can just stick in 21 for both of these xy's. So then, I'm going to go ahead and move up Whoop, over here. Then you have 21 times 21 plus 21 divided by 5 times 21. Now, this might be a calculator moment, uh, which is totally fine because you're going to have use of your calculator on the test. Okay, so 21 squared is 441. So you have 441 plus 21 divided by 5 times 21, which is 105. So as you can see, that's not going to be a pretty problem, but that's why it's you know, bonus problem. So then you, what you'd have to do is add 441 to 21, and you would get 462. So you have 462 divided by 105. And 462 divided by 105 is either 4.4, or you could also write it as 22 over 5. So either of those would be perfectly acceptable depending on what multiple choice they give you. So uh, good job guys on our first algebra video. Um, so you've learned a lot and basically the idea for everything is one, use whatever is the easiest, fastest method for you. And then two, a lot of these things like functions and inequalities, absolute value, etc., they're just dressed up equations. So just follow the cardinal rule of operations and you'll be just fine. Okay, so I will see you guys back here and we'll go ahead and continue going on with math.